Today, we are talking with Ashley, and Ashley is 33 years old. She is currently a recruiter, and she has some financial goals, first of which is to be consumer debt-free by 2027. She wants to be student loan debt-free by 2034. She wants to be making 120000 by 2027. Hopefully, you can do that sooner. I feel like you could. That's on <laughs> And then she wants her dream car for her 40th birthday, which is in 2030. Uh, which, what's your dream car? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. It was Range Rover, but now I don't know. I'm just kind of open, but I do know I want to get something nice. And I want to either okay. pay for it all or down big down payment. Yeah. Okay. So about seven years to get prepped for that. Yeah. Okay. And then there's a couple of things that you struggle with financially. So first would be your high interest debt, which we're going to talk about, of course, in detail, and then not accounting for giving. Is that like it, things kind of come up in the month that you didn't expect to give for? Or... Yes. The, it's always the last minute of, oh, I'm going to this party and I don't account for the gift and mm -hmm. or if I want to bring something to it. It's like I'm not adding my social calendar to my budget, I guess. I see. Okay. 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 Yeah. Good to know. For some background, Ashley and I actually worked together about six months ago in December of 2023. And I'm actually going to go through some of the stuff that we talked about then and how her finances have changed since then. Um, so let me hop to my other screen here. So uh, she did have debt then, and that was about $57,000. And we're going to talk about her detail, her debt in more detail, but now she has about 87000 So a little bit of an increase, mostly because she purchased a car, which is something that we did talk about. So I knew that was coming. And then some IRS debt was popped in there, but we will we'll talk through that. Um, so a little bit more debt since we last spoke, but it looks like you've made some progress on, on the debts that you were working with before, which is good. You did purchase the used car. Uh, which car did you end up? Was it a used car? Yeah, it was a used okay. car and ended up getting a Nissan Rogue. Okay. And that was I know we said about twenty thousand for that. Was yeah. that so the so the car itself was in the eighteens, but then I also bought a like warranty type deal mm -hmm. just because of um, you know, being in that season of singleness, I decided I needed some little extra comfort, I guess, in a warranty. So that's what I did. Okay. Okay. So okay. did it come to above 20 or? Um, I think 21, but not more than 21. Yeah. Okay. And you um, did that really recent then. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. I, I ended up doing it in December, I think. Yeah. I oh, did December. it in December. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. You did want to build your just starter emergency fund to 1000. It looks like right now that's at about 529. So mm -hmm. definitely something still got to work on. And you do want to pursue your MBA, which it looks like you have started started going after that. Is that coming this fall? Yes. So um, I started my MBA in January 2025. And okay. I did get my rainy day fund to 1000 but then I blew a tire and then spent some. So that one's kind of like now going back up. Go back to it. Okay. Well, that's good that you had it to, to pull from. So that's... Yes. That's yeah. what it's for. So. Yeah, exactly. It was, okay. It was successful. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. And did you take your trip to Jamaica in the summer? I did. I okay, took my good. trip to Jamaica. I stayed under budget on my spending money. Uh -huh. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thoroughly good. enjoyed it. Good. I'm glad. Yeah, I, I do think we should enjoy life while living and paying off Absolutely. debt. So exactly. I was all for it. Awesome. Love that. I know that you had recently, I think you had moved to your apartment recently. Mm -hmm. So you were planning to buy furniture. Did mm -hmm. you start buying some furniture and I stay did, within the budget? And I, and I stayed under budget. I okay. didn't um, go into any debt, any credit card debt, should I say. I did, my sister did buy me a couple things. So now I owe her a couple hundred dollars. But I'd say I successfully furnished the apartment without uh, going crazy. Awesome. Okay. Are you all done with that? Anything else that you need to buy? Yeah. For the... Okay. No, I'm not buying anything else. And uh, I guess, when was it that you started going through your divorce? Was it last summer? So I would say last fall, last fall. Last fall. Okay. 
Okay. So yeah, that was something we talked about a lot last time because it may have cost you some money. We were, we were looking at about $9,000. Did that end up costing anything? No, no. So we ended up starting the process with our um, just doing it ourselves, no lawyer involved. And then as time went on, it kind of just was like we were cooperating so so well through getting divorced and cooperating so well through co-parenting that it kind of led to more conversations of reconciliation and therapy and things of that nature. And so that's kind of where we are with it now. So um no out of pocket expense so far with the therapy or um anything with the mediation for okay. where we started. Good. I'm glad to hear. I mean obviously a divorce is never an ideal yeah, situation. Yeah, it was or never fun. what you want. Yeah. Yeah, it was never what you want, but I was I was mentally and financially getting prepared to do it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But for for it to not be a financial burden is amazing. So I'm yeah. glad you were able to work through that. Very good. And you have one child, is that right? Yes. One time. Yes. Okay. One okay. Okay. And then I know you wanted to get braces. Is that for yes. yourself? Is that right? Okay. For me. Yeah. Uh huh. What's the status on that? Um, I haven't made any progress on that. Okay. So I should. Well, I started the sinking fund. So I say that. I mean, it has a title in a bucket, but it doesn't have much money in it. Mm -hmm. Um. So not much there, but the goal is still there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And do you have a timeline in in mind for that for the braces? Well, I know with my HSA, I can um front load it for braces, okay. and so if I do that, then I guess January twenty twenty five would be a good date to target for that because I can um that's when the new like opening roll well opening roll will be in October, but that's when the new um HSA will release. Okay. Okay. The other things we had talked about was buying a house. I think mm -hmm. that might be a little bit further out. And we had said yes. two to three years, so it might be a little yeah. bit further out now. Mm -hmm. Um, and then funding any sports for your for your child. So yes, yep. Okay. Still doing that. We end up doing baseball. We're currently awesome. doing wrestling. Um, but we're gonna yeah, still doing that. Okay. Perfect. Do you know what your income was back when we first spoke? I yes. Might be able to find um, out. Hold on, let's see. Yes, it was. If we put in December, it was ninety four thousand five hundred and thirty. Okay, and you said you've received two raises since then. Yes. So then in January, I got a raise to ninety seven thousand five hundred, and then this in July, I got another raise. Oh wow! I think I put the wrong thing. I actually got a raise to ninety eight thousand nine sixty two. Nice. Okay, even yeah. better. Mm -hmm. Nine sixty two, and I think you had received a bonus. Did you get a bonus earlier this year? I did, and that's how some of the IRS debt came in to play oh. because I got a bonus, but I took my um. Like I put my my taxes down so that I could get more of my bonus, but like you still owe the money. So now okay. I have money. Did you get the bonus in yeah. December? It was twenty twenty three. I don't know. Yeah, it was twenty twenty three. So this is for twenty twenty three. Filed the taxes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, then let's talk about your debt. I mean, I think that's everything that we kind of talked about six months ago, and then obviously we'll go yeah. through we'll go through your numbers and see what they look like now. Um, so with your debt, as of right now, you have about 86,696 and a big chunk of that is student loans followed by your car with student loans is 32,000 that's in forbearance until November, 2025. Now, how did you get that in forbearance? It's actually, that's a typo. It's to November, 2024. Oh, okay. So it's so now that's coming it's up. Like Mm -hmm. But then they'll be in forbearance again when you start yeah. school. When in, I start school, anyway. yeah. Okay. And that's 32000 Some of that is, do you know about how much of that is unsubsidized versus subsidized? Um, Majority of it is, was not accruing. Was okay. Not accruing. I okay. know that for sure. It wasn't until my senior year. Mm -hmm. So only about two semesters that I started getting Okay. Unsubsidized. Yeah. Have you noticed that increasing at all? 
Um, yeah. Well, just not not like as it was happening, but from when I when I graduated, I know that I was in about twenty two thousand dollars worth mm-hmm. of debt. So since it's been ten years, yeah, and I'm in thirty two. So yes. Yeah. Okay. Wow. That's quite a bit then. Okay. Mm. So then your car is next. That's about 20,000. I was bummed to see this interest rate. 16.89%. Yes. Yes. Yeah. What is, what is your plan to address that? Well, what happened exactly? I went to my credit union to try to get the loan, but then they said, okay, you got to get a cheaper car. But I kind of already had my heart set on that car. So I just got the loan from CarMax. Mm. But I'm planning to um, refinance. The game plan is still on to, to refinance for my car and then also try to get my, um, I don't know. I'm a little nervous to do a balance transfer. Okay. Yeah, but, they can. it can know, be tricky can depending on your situation. So we can see what if that's a good idea or not. Yeah. Do you know what your credit score is right now? It is 662. Okay. Yeah, maybe once that gets over, I mean, that's not too bad, but maybe once that bumps up, even past 700 would be a good time yeah. to refinance. That's what I was thinking. Okay. So that's at 20,000, a pretty high payment to 451. Um, but I think more importantly would be your credit cards. So um, the first credit card that has the highest balance is about 15400 And I think that one was a similar balance back in December. Is that, have you just been paying yeah, minimums? Yeah, that's, ch- that's the problem, child one. I mean, pretty much just minimum payments because it's three, I think what I have to pay is 325 and I pay 355 something like barely paying over it. But okay. I think it's like, I feel comfortable with that debt. So I don't feel, I'm not angry at the debt. So it just feels like I'm borrowing the same $300 and then I'm putting it back and then I'm borrowing it. Then I'm putting it back. Like I need to close the account. I feel like, but it's one of my oldest cards. I mean, the one that I'm really working on the Delta community, that's the oldest card, but this one is older too. I don't really want to not have the credit history, but I also don't have the self-control to not keep spending the same yeah. $300 back and forth. Like what's that? Okay. So the higher balance, the 15,000, is that Navy fed? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think that's important. If you think you should close it, that's if, unless you can really commit to using your, your, just your cash, your debit card. Um, I think that might be important. I think okay. it's the same reason why I'm saying I'm nervous about doing a, a balance transfer, which is just like, if you have the bandwidth, you could potentially touch it. And so yes. I don't want, I don't want it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah it may not be a good fit. Okay. So then you have your Delta community credit card, 7,500 and 15% interest rate. So I think, I think really that should be, I know the car has an, a higher interest rate, but I would say the Delta community card first, they're both pretty similar rates, but um, that's a lower balance and higher interest rate. So I would say focus on that one first. Um, Okay. So we have the IRS debt and that is definitely a new one since we last spoke. So could you talk about that a little bit more? Yeah. So that one, it won't be 100% on me because we'll be filing married jointly. Um, so it's some, it's some of, you know, it's offsetting by each other. Um, but that's, so that's kind of an approximation, but basically, yeah, I got, if I'm not mistaken, I got two bonuses or half and half of a bonus in 2023. And one of them, the, the company covered the taxes. The other one, I just went exempt. I think, I think that's what it is when you, when you don't let any of the taxes get taken out but at the time i did need the money when i was moving but now they need <laughs> uncle sam needs his money back so yeah now okay. i have to pay okay so i'm planning to when i do file, so right now i just got an extension and so when i'm planning to file i will just get a payment plan and got it, it off. Yeah. yeah okay so we don't worry about it for now is that right that it's deferred until april of next mm-hmm. year okay mm-hmm. Okay. 
Uh, and when you, I'm assuming you'll get some more bonuses this year. Do you think you'll be able to just keep the taxes as, as is? Yeah, I'm not, properly? yeah, I'm not going to mess with it. I'm not going to mess with it yeah. this year. Hope, hope, hoping that that will help me balance it out or whatever. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. And then you have some, um, not personal loans, but family, family, small loans uh, to your mom, to your sister. I know you had those before. Are they the same, same debts that you owe? Yeah, them one, I, well, one I paid off. I had one that was to my mother-in-law before. So I, I paid that one off like eight mm -hmm. cents. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, one for my mom. I like, I didn't, I bought something else. And then um, same with my sister. Okay. Um, and then the other thing is just my phone, which I didn't count last time, but I do consider it a debt. Like I would rather pay off the equipment so that I can kind of shop around and maybe get a different phone plan. Mm -hmm. So I do want to count that one as a debt. Okay. Yeah. I think it makes sense too. And did you, with your expenses, does your $177 phone bill include that 27? So that's actually, um, uh, oh yeah, yeah, it does. It includes the $27 that it, um, but the reason why that bill, typically my phone bill is a hundred dollars, um, mm -hmm. and like 69 cents, but because I went to Jamaica, I had like $12 a day roaming. So okay. that's why August bills higher. And then you owe some for your orientation for the MBA. Is that right? 800? Yes. Yes. It, 800 by January. Okay. No interest? Nope. Okay. No. That's good. 800 by January. So have you just been trying to pay enough to... I just, I just found out. I just got the letter. So I think the game plan is, yeah, every time I get paid, put towards it. Because you can like keep paying on it. Until okay. Until the what happens if you don't pay that by January? I don't know, because it's a mandatory orientation. So potentially they will put your balance with your school balance, like okay. your classes balance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have you paid anything for that in August? This no. Month? Okay. Nope. Are you going to? No. Nope. Okay. So starting in September. So September, October, November. By. So like 200 a month would be mm -hmm. ideal. Okay. We'll bump it up to that. Okay. That looks good then. Um, so that all makes sense. 87,000. I mean, with the, since we spoke last in December, how have you felt about your finances? I know that it took you some time to, like when we spoke, we made your budget and stuff and it took you some time to kind of come back to your spreadsheets. So how have you been handling your finances over the last six months or seven months or so? Um, so yeah, basically I, um, created a, like a, a book that was, um, like a budget book notebook alongside the, um, the spreadsheets that you sent. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I reached out maybe, maybe in March or February, like, hold on, how do I do these spreadsheets? Yeah. So I, um, I really have been enjoying the simple, simple weekly budget, um, because, I'm very much like I need to see action over a week basis. Like I can't look at over a monthly basis. Like it doesn't click for me. Okay. Um, so basically what I've been doing in my notebook is tracking my um, paydays, my credit score, um, any like to-do list tasks that I feel like to go with the, um, to go with my, money plans. I also have been doing some cash budgeting. So I'll write out what I need to keep in my account for auto pays, but also how I'm going to break down the cash that I'm taking out of my account. I think that has worked for me very well um, because when I don't do the cash slash zero based budgeting thing, I, um, I tend to overspend. Mm -hmm. So it's good for me to pull all of my money out and organize it into where I want it to go. I will say on the exact flip side of that same thing, one of my triggers is like when my money is low and I feel restricted, like that's the time that I feel like I want to buy stuff. Mm. <laughs> so with a zero based budget and you put all of your money into where you want it to be, that kind of triggers that feeling like, well, Maybe I still want to buy something that's just for me. So I guess I can probably overcome that with like a personal shopping type of category. But 
I would say that's basically the only pitfall is that I kind of trigger myself by bringing it all the way down to zero. So now I'm just like, what? I want to buy, I want to buy something. That's a weird trigger though. Like it's like, so interesting. Like, yeah. You don't have it. So now, you know, you're restricted, you know, you need to do X, Y, and Z to get to your next step. So now you feel like you should shop. It, at least I'm self-aware. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm self-aware that that's happening, but so um, interesting. Do you think it's a, a stress response by chance? Like, I think because so. Because it's I like, so. oh, I'm tight on cash. So I, it's yeah. like an emotional spending thing. Yeah, I think so. Triggers okay. that impulse. Like, okay. you know, you really need that random thing on Amazon right now. Like, Interesting. Yeah, you know. Okay. Good to know. Okay. Do you think it would be helpful to not do a zero based budget? Like just leave a pretty you good know, chunk? Because I think that doing it is is the best way that I've been put, actually putting extra on my credit cards and not sh- not um especially using the delta one that I'm working on like I think it's working so what I did you know in preparation for this call mm-hmm. I took my phone I took my credit card and my debit card off of Amazon okay because if you got to get up and get your card that's that just adds a barrier yeah <laughs> Good, so, good for you. I hope. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Any barriers you can add, or I think we we should make room for personal spending if you know if you want to do that, of course. But um, yeah, that's very interesting. So at least you you are aware of it. That's good. We'll have to work on that. But <laughs> now let's talk through some of your assets. So I know that we wanted to have a one thousand dollar emergency fund, starter emergency fund. You said you had some. You had that and then it was depleted, which is still amazing because you had your emergency fund. So now that's at 529, I think we definitely should work to get that back to a thousand. Maybe first prioritize that Mm -hmm. um, just in case something pops up, hopefully not. But then of course, after the 1000, I think we should add to it. You are still renting, right? Um, Yes. So the lease for this apartment is up November, mid-November. Okay. And you'll continue to rent there or elsewhere? Rent no, elsewhere? I'm planning to move back. I'm planning to move back to the house. So we we own the house. And so okay. in that, I'll be contributing towards the mortgage about $800. Okay. I think so I that's why that the next three months budget will look different than the the rest after that. So November will be a lower, lower expenses, really. Okay. Mm-hmm. So 800 mortgage. Okay, we can take a look at that and see what uh, debt, extra debt payments look like at that point. Exactly. Okay, so for now, renting. Um, I guess with the, I would want your emergency. F- so you own a house. Mm-hmm. The emergency fund would want to be higher because you also have your son. Um, so, is there a goal in mind that you? I want to have. have- I mean, I feel like I have a stair step goal, thousand, and then three months of bare bones, and then maybe three months of full, and then six months bare bones, and six months full, then ultimately okay. one year, um, but baby steps. Yes. Okay. So we'll start with the 1K and then work up to three months slowly. Okay. So 529 there. We'll focus on that probably in September, getting that to 1,000. Online savings, uh, 20. Is that your, where do you keep your rainy day fund? So I have my rainy day fund in cash. I have okay. online, I have buckets on Ally. That's my online savings. Okay. Yeah, my sinking funds. Okay. Would you be willing to, and I'm sorry, I think we might've talked about this uh, back in December, but would you be willing to put the rainy day fund in your online savings or do you want that in cash? I am, but I just feel like my so I'm much less apt to open that envelope and hand the cash over versus if I just have to make a transfer and then two days later, <laughs> now I have the money. I okay. Like yeah. <laughs> nope. That's good. <laughs> Self-awareness. So keep it in cash. That's perfectly fine. And even with the thousand, you can, you can keep that in cash too. Once you get to the thousand. Okay. Your 401k is about 10,000. Are you still contributing to that? I think I'm only contributing at 1%. I'm not doing the full 4%, which I think that I should. That's like, I the match? It. Yeah, the match is 4%. I paused okay. it trying to focus on my debt, but I don't know that it's enough 
like significant enough to that I shouldn't do that? Or am I just leaving four hundred dollars on the table? I would bump it up to 4% personally. That's a pretty strong belief of mine. Like that's free money. It's part of your yeah. pay, you know? So it's money from the company that you're not getting for free, mm-hmm. even with the debt. Uh, if you are in a situation where it's like, you don't know where you're going to live, to, you know, yeah. like where your next meal is mm-hmm. going to come from, that's different. But I think you could absolutely handle that. Okay. So bump up your 401k to the whatever the match is. If it's the 4%, okay. then that's perfect. Your Roth IRA is at two hundred seventy six dollars. Uh, are you contributing to that at all? No, not right now. Okay. I plan to next year, um, okay. but I just kind of was giving myself one full year to just focus. Yeah, yeah, I would say to to wait on that. Just do the four hundred one k, and then five twenty nine college savings is about twenty five hundred. That's really good. Are you adding to that one? My mom is. Um, okay. My in laws do. So it's kind of been growing just on a gift basis. Um, but I, I have that tracked in my budget binder too. just make sure I'm keeping an eye on that that's making progress. Perfect. Yeah. That's awesome that they're, that's a good gift that he may not appreciate now, but he doesn't, he doesn't, but he makes like a whole little certificate. He has no idea. Oh, (laughs) good. Yeah. He'll love it later. I I mean, I would, so Mm -hmm. very good. Okay. So we talked about your salary. 98,000. It looks like your, and correct me if I'm wrong, your monthly take home pay is about 6,031 on a yep. monthly basis. Okay. Yeah. So we'll look at that in your budget. As far as your expenses go, I know that when we spoke last time, nothing stood out to me as super problematic. Um, we'll look through all of your numbers and kind of just go through them one by one and see what, if there's anything to eliminate and what else to add. As far as kind of going back to your debt, I think you should focus on the Delta community card first mm-hmm. and then then your uh, Navy federal credit card and then move on to the car. Would you okay. agree with that order or how yeah, do you I feel about it? Yeah, I was thinking it, definitely. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah I, I don't love, obviously I don't like that interest rate on your car and it's the highest one, but just because you'll probably refinance that fairly soon. And yeah. I think the credit card is more of a risk to have the credit card mm-hmm. debt versus the car. Obviously with the student loans, you might have to pay maybe just for one month in December. Yeah. That's what looks like. Yeah. Does it tell you a minimum payment that it's going to be or? Um, no, actually not yet. Okay. Um, okay. Previous to uh, the COVID pause thing, it was saying like 234, I think, okay. but they also don't necessarily know how much I make at least I don't think so okay I haven't updated that in a while okay so it might be higher yeah I could see it being higher okay so we'll we'll look at basically the rest of the year and what what each month would kind of look like so you get an idea of debt payments if that comes up in December that will be paused in January and then with you going back to school how much debt is going to be added on to the student loans um okay so i think in total the de- degree program is about 20,000 maybe like 18,000 but my job will pay 5,000 and 5,000 like it's 5,000 a year so okay. i will be looking at about 10,000 of either student loan debt or hopefully scholarships perfect and that that'll i guess be slowly add it yeah. on like each semester and you'll mm-hmm. see what that looks like okay yeah, i'm glad they i'll take it out and then they reimburse like that okay that's awesome that they cover some of it okay that's actually been and i said this i filmed a, a podcast earlier today and that's been like a recurring thing where everybody is getting their tuition covered by their jobs i'm like that's so amazing <laughs> it's a like, perk it's a perk yeah yeah <laughs> that's really like it's convincing to go back to school because if it's the bulk of it's covered that's amazing so Glad that's there then. So maybe 42 by the time you graduate, which I guess how long is your program going to be? It's a an 18 and a month half? program. Okay. 18 yeah. month. So a year and a half. And then how will that impact your income? So it's not necessarily like a direct, it's not like how teachers, they get their specialists, like they'll immediately get a promotion or um, um, an increase. Mm-hmm. For me, it's going to be in a sense of, potentially getting a promotion 
or okay. so it's not gonna it's not gonna immediately impact it, but I think it will help. Okay. And do you think that promotion it'll be like internally promotion? Yeah. That's what you're aiming more for. More than okay. likely. Yeah, more than likely. Okay. Okay. And then with your other debts, with the what you owe your mom, your sister, your iPhone, I think that makes sense to just kind of slowly pay those. And then the MBA, maybe we can bump that up to the orientation, that $800, maybe bump that to $200 per month so that you don't, you can get everything cleared away with that. Anything else that you want to share with your, your debt assets or your income? No. Oh, yes. When we talked last time, my son was in school. He was in, he, we were paying him for him to go to school. But mm -hmm. this year we don't. We're okay. Healthy. So that's, that's you. Yeah. So that's how I know there's going to be some extra income. And I just need to make sure that I don't, you know, buy a bag or something like that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I have a solid plan. Okay. Because I'm take we're, we have a, a scholarship that, so that has taken that off of our plate. So right. now um, I can definitely throw more money at this bit. Okay. Yeah. That's perfect. And I mean, hopefully with this, I would like everybody who I'm speaking to, I would like to follow up with in like six months or so. I mean, I and did, yeah. yeah, I think hopefully that will hold, hold you accountable a little bit and we can see where you're at in a few months from now. So, yeah. okay, very good. So I'm going to hop to my spreadsheets, your spreadsheets. And I started filling in the, the income and expenses. Um, so for this is going to be for September specifically okay. obviously we're filming this in august and there's a couple weeks left or a week and a half and you'll still want to kind of keep things in check if you've been tracking somewhere keep that up that's in my opinion always the most important thing budgeting and tracking every single dollar so you know that you know what you're budgeting is actually accurate uh so still try to keep things tight and in order with august but for thinking of september specifically i think you did already confirm this but your income will be about 6031 is that right yes okay and any other income that you're receiving no not okay. really no okay and let's go through your expenses so i plugged in everything that you sent to me or you put on your sheets so rent as a for just september one thousand six hundred forty one dollars and then renter's insurance is 26 do you pay that monthly or is that annual yes. Okay, I'll so pay that 20, yeah. 26. Okay. Electric, should that will that be 116 for September? It might be lower. I would probably put it at 100 because I'm definitely at the apartment a lot less. So okay. it has been coming down. Okay. Wi Fi is 65? Yes. The Wi Fi over here is 65. Okay. And then your phone, I think this one's a little bit lower is Low, that right yes oh so, yes so it'll be about a hundred dollars and i think 69 cents total for that and that includes the 27 yep. for your phone okay so let me delete okay. that from here because i put it down here okay and then school so that's the update that is yes, no okay amazing yeah. and you have a cleaner how yeah. often do they come um once a month once a month okay so 155, is that right? Mm hmm Okay. So that's the cleaner plus the suit. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Um, back to school, I'm assuming that was for Yeah, August. that was for August. So shouldn't shouldn't put anything, nothing for back to school this this year or this month. I mean. Is there anything for like sports or any expenses in general that he would need for September? Um probably put like maybe $50, we might either get them a pair of shoes or we may sign up for piano lessons, but it shouldn't ex exceed $50, whatever we decide to do. Okay. Is his name KJ? Yes. Are you okay with putting that on here? <laughs> yeah, yes, that's fine. Okay. Training, is that like gym? Yep. Gym training? Okay, yep. gym training is $60. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Gas for your car, 240 um i think we can take that down to two 200 my okay. commute is shorter from the house than the apartment so that's awesome the escalate okay is that going to be even for september yep okay. i would say so okay. definitely cheaper for september 
groceries, 500. Do you think that's, have you been tracking groceries and stuff while you're spending? I have. I've been tracking both. And I think that's about right. Food Okay. out and groceries are about right. Okay. So groceries, 500 food out 300 prescriptions, 85. Yep, that's right. Okay. Geico car insurance. I'm assuming is this Yeah. uh monthly. Yes, that's Did you monthly. have to pay? Okay. One ninety five and eight cents. Um, nails. Will you keep that at zero for September? Yeah, I'm taking a break. Okay. Awesome. So spending slash clothes slash fun. You have it one hundred. Do you want to bump that up or how? I don't ever. I put the category there, but then I don't track anything under that. Mm, okay. Um, I don't know, so I don't know. I guess I probably should bump it up because Do you think um, that I do. I don't buy things, but I do, do things. Like I go out and do things. So I need, yeah. Okay. Do you want to separate fun and entertainment and personal? Maybe, maybe that'll make it more, make it more sense. Okay, let's do that. So thinking of September specifically, any plans that you'll be Okay. Um, for fun and entertainment? yeah. So it, my husband's birthday is in September, so I need extra for that. Um, So I would put that under gifts, like if you're going to buy gifts or maybe yeah, um, that's go out to get eat, together. I would say food out. Yeah. Okay. So. I think the going out to dinner, we could probably fit within the 300. I think if we go, if we put, maybe I should put 100 for fun and entertainment and 100 for personal. Okay. And I, I don't spend more than that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, as long as you're tracking it and making sure that that's kind of where you stay in Yeah. check. And um, I mean, you know yourself best, like wherever you think it is that your money is is dripping out, like you were saying, buying stuff, even though you have the zero based budget and going to Amazon or whatever. So just track it and make sure you're staying on top of that. Yeah. Okay. So Okay. yeah, it just locks. Yeah, that's about eighty five bucks a month. Okay. And then your hair. Yeah. 130. Yeah, that's about right. Okay. And then I think these were, so you have brace face vacation. I think these are actually, let me take vacation on. I moved it to the bottom, but brace face is that also savings, right? Yes, that's a, yes. That's um one of the sinking funds that I made. And And that was I didn't I wanted like so this is I'm focusing on, on my debt. So I didn't want to put a lot towards my sinking funds, but I do want to get them started and I do want to kind of build that muscle of making sure that I'm slowly putting something on there. So I was planning to do like If I look at this, maybe eighty dollars a month, ninety dollars a month, forty dollars a month, and twenty dollars a month. But since I'm kind of doing it on a lower base for the savings right now, I just did eight dollars, nine dollars, Mm -hmm. Okay. just so that it can have something in there, but like not really. And do you want to continue doing that? Um. Yeah. Until it's time for me to like. I think once I move, I'll probably uh bump bump the. thinking funds action up because Okay. I do want to pay that car insurance in total Mm um, hmm in six months, the six month thing. Like I want to do that. Yeah. And then and I want to definitely have car maintenance money just Okay. set setting. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I think it's a, if you can take advantage of any increases in income, that would be like to get ahead on the car insurance that can be tough to like first get started. But yeah, I think that the debt is definitely priority here. Okay. So then back up here, tithing, you put 30. Is that correct for September? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned uh, your husband's birthday and um, you mentioned that you give, but like things come up and you like have birthday celebrations or, Yes. or parties to go to. Do you want to put gifts in here for September? Yes. I Okay. need yes. I How have a much lot of do you think you'll have to, to spend in, in gifts? So oh, the thing with September is October is a big gift month for us. So I'll probably Okay. get some stuff in September for October. Mm-hmm. So I would say probably 
in gifts, three hundred dollars. Okay. Sorry, bro. <laughs> I was really thinking about that. <laughs> thinking about the gifts, and I have we have um the first Kyle's birthday, then KJ's birthday, then that's in October. So this will okay. be a part of my October budget. But KJ's birthday, our anniversary, my mother in law's birthday, my father in law's birthday, and my birthday is all in October. So okay. It's exciting. Awesome. <laughs> that is fun. It's always fun when it's all together. Okay, so three hundred for the gifts. Aside from your debts and your savings, anything else that you can think of for September? How about like health, wellness, that sort of thing? Gym membership. Well, I was supposed to do a five k, but I did. They canceled it because it keeps raining here. Um, mm-hmm. No, my gym membership is on my husband. So that's it. Nothing health wise. No trips or anything. I think okay. we covered it. Okay. Yeah. No travel coming up that you have to book things. Okay. Mm-mm. So then we have your debts. And first, let me, um, with just the base of your debts, just the minimums, your total expenses are 5,552-ish. And if we subtract your expenses from your income, you're left with about 470, 480 or so. But mm-hmm. I think, so one thing with your credit cards, the I would say do the minimums. So let's see. You mentioned that one of them you were paying extra to it. Yeah, I've been paying two sixty on the on the Delta community and paying three fifty five on the Navy Federal. Do you know and what the, been, are these the actual minimum payments? Those are the, yeah, those are the actuals. And then what I've been paying, and then for the cre- for the car, I've been paying five hundred where the okay. bill is four fifty five. Okay, so I would say for September, just do the minimum. For all of your debts and bump up the rainy day fund, 471. Okay. Okay. So 471 to the rainy day fund. Yeah. And that will be, that will cover it. I ideally that you would bump this MBA orientation to the 200, but I think Mm -hmm. if you, you know, once you get to November, December, you're going to be paying the mortgage instead of the rent, Mm -hmm. you can you can see how things look come come then. So that's taking care of your $1,000 starter, very basic starter emergency fund for September. If you have to deprioritize anything in September, it would definitely be these smaller savings. It's not that much mm-hmm. money, but it's something. So wait to do those. And yeah. obviously this isn't priority either. Like You don't have to put to savings, so you could deprioritize that. But uh, I think that would be nice to just get over oh, with. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Get it to a thousand and then move on to the debts. Um, I think this looks pretty good. So altogether, if we subtract your expenses from your income, you're left with 886. I would say that's basically zero base budgeting. Yeah, for, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And we made room for the personal spending, the fun and entertainment. Um, so it's just, yeah, for you, it's really important to track and make sure you're actually sticking with these, with these numbers. And your car insurance, is this is this just one car? Yeah, it's just one car. Okay. Uh, do you have any tickets on your record or? I don't. You but don't. Okay. When I when I went to try to get um, insurance, they basically say you and your husband are one entity. Oh. And so he has some. I see. Uh, incident. Okay. <laughs> so okay. this is the best I can do. But okay. I'm, but I am thinking potentially I can get that down. Okay. That's yeah, I think eventually right if you uh-huh. could, I mean, I always do like the, any discounts you can get the defensive driver's course or I switch I around. That. I went when I was in high school. So my mom okay. had, she had me on there, but I wonder. Yeah. It costs like, I think through Geico, they have a $15 course so and then you complete easy. that and they it submits to them automatically um mm-hmm. i think it does if i remember correctly and that i think that saved me it wasn't anything crazy but it definitely makes a bit of a difference I'm so pay five dollars a month whatever it is yeah yeah so let me put that as a to do 
going to make a little to-do list up here. This counts on car insurance. And then I think eventually if you could shop around, I know uh, for those watching, Ashley's in Atlanta. I'm in Georgia as well. And I know when I moved, I moved further South uh, last year and my insurance oh. went up with Geico. They were like, Oh, there's what? more crime there. So I'm like, no, I would have thought so you were going to do better. I know I've, I've moved further out from the city. So um, it's just so weird. So I switched to progressive because of that. And okay. it was like much lower. So sure. look on that. And then you don't have to rush to shop around, but definitely something to, I don't know, maybe the next time your six month premium comes around when they change the, it'll probably increase it again. Um, well, it actually want... decreased. It came this time and it decreased. By okay. I was like, okay. Okay, good. Okay. Perfect. It's still high, but it is. <laughs> so then other to do is get your, uh, I'm going to put an EF or just emergency fund, but your rainy day fund to 1000 in September. And then from there, we'll slowly add to it. Add this, oh, your 401k. Oh, yeah. Bump 401k to 4%. Yeah. That will be another one. Okay. So I do want to look at kind of what the rest of the year will look like and see what's possible with paying down your debt. So I'm going to make these real quick. So for October, mm -hmm. do you think your income... You get paid every other week. Is that right? Or so is it on specific paid, days? I'm semi monthly. So 15th and last day. Okay. okay so it should be pretty That's consistent. Okay. Yeah. So it'll be okay. Same, yeah. Okay. So we'll keep it at that. And then you're still going to pay the rent that you will yep. still be renting. Everything else will probably be about the same. It's, it's hard mm -hmm. to predict too far in advance, but um, so this will all be the same rainy day fund. I think we should maybe bump this down to just adding a hundred. Those are fine. And then if we can bump at this point, your MBA orientation, I don't love doing that because it has no interest. Like, yes, I want you to. Pay it off. Yeah. I want you to make sure everything is all set with your MBA. If that's going to be a risk at all. Okay. Let's do it. Let's see what it looks like. So 200 to the MBA. I'm going to highlight that. So, you know, and then your credit card. We want to focus on Delta community. And I think that's where, so the minimum of 150 plus an extra 300. And actually, I think you'll pay off your, yeah. you'll be done paying um, your mom by then. Okay. So $20 you'll owe her still. So this will just be 20, which means you could actually put even more. I'm going to highlight that. I think you could put an extra 440, is that what that? Yes, 440 to your debt. And I'm actually going to change this. It came over here. Okay, I didn't even put it on there. So let's look at just these numbers okay. when we're looking at. So we'll come back to that. So it'll be an extra 400 in October. In November, same income. Same, I guess your rent might be a little bit lower per yeah, rent. Yeah, so it'll be half, I would say. Okay. And then will you pay the mortgage in November as well? No, I'll... Okay. In December, I will. So okay. And then renter's insurance. We'll just keep it on there for November, but I know that will probably change as well. Okay. And then this can continue to be 100 and I know that we had last time we talked, we talked about that year at a glance page where you're plugging in what to expect throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Is there any vacation or car maintenance that could be upcoming at the beginning, like the first six months of 2025? Um, no, there shouldn't be. I don't plan to do um any traveling in 2025. And I just got my car maintenance this month. So awesome. should be good. Yeah. Okay. So we'll keep these small. I know it's not awesome to see, but it'll slowly build up. Um, I think you're fine to keep those in cash, but if you, if at any point you feel more comfortable with moving money to your high yield savings account. These I have, uh, they're on these, these little ones, they're on Ally. Okay. Okay. So they'll gain a little bit of interest and that helps too. Okay. 
So those you can say say in ally and then the other in cash. Um, if we bump this up to 200, so highlight that. And then we still are focusing on actually your mom. This will be done. You won't have to pay this. We'll put that for December. And then credit card number one was still focusing on a minimum of 150 plus. Ooh, okay. 1200. Do you think you could do that in? I think so because uh, some of my other bills will start to come down. Okay. Yeah. And obviously this is, it's too far to predict these, but just mm -hmm. to see what's possible. And then come December, you're going to have no rent. It will be your mortgage and you're paying half of that. Do you know what that will be? Um, 800. Okay. And do you still, no, is there any insurance um, that you, there is though. So that that'll still be um, about the same amount. So it'll be $30. We have like the, um, if something happened. Yep. Okay. So 30. I'm sure these will change a bit. Yeah. Electric Wi Fi, but maybe we're safe to keep it around. I think I know. So he has, so we can bring the electricity down to about $68. Okay. And then for Wi Fi, about $44. Perfect. My phone will be the same. No mm -hmm. school cleaner. I don't know what we're going to do with the cleaner because we're still going to have the cleaner at the house, but maybe we'll have her come more often. So I'll probably leave that as the same. Okay. Anyway, same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all of these things will probably be stay the same. But mm -hmm. I would need gifts in December, mm -hmm. probably like $500. 500 yeah. And yeah, I mean, I haven't even been changing gifts for these other ones. So if you're not buying gifts in oh yeah, no November, I'll November, keep those up. No, I won't be buying gifts in November, but I'll probably host Thanksgiving. So it'll still be a pretty big chunk. Probably not okay. three hundred dollars, but so maybe groceries will be yeah. like six fifty or so. Mm -hmm. And then this will be and then October. You'll probably buy gifts. Yeah, October is, is definitely a gift one. Yeah. Okay, so this actually you might be able to do for November. You might actually be able to do thirteen, fourteen hundred extra, and that some of that could go to your debt uh, to your emergency fund too if you wanted it to. But we'll just see for your debt what that looks like. So extra fourteen, and then come December, your mom will be paid off. Your sister. Uh, so you'll have September, October, November, maybe 50 that you'll still owe her. And then it will be done. Student loans may come back for you. So I'm just going to put, I'll just do 300 yeah. maybe to see. Well, I'm going to highlight that because it's if um, MBA orientation 200, you might have to bump that up too in order to just completely pay it off, but we'll put 200 and then... Gifts we bumped up. We're still focusing on credit card one. Um, I'm going to go a little bit lower, 450. So an extra 450 to debt in December. So 400, 1400, 450. I like that. 1400. I know. That's amazing. Okay. So for, for this, I, I know we've talked about this before, but this isn't 100% accurate. It's just a way to kind of project what you're paying down. Mm -hmm. I did only put in the credit cards and your car because everything else doesn't have interest rates. So it's not going to calculate properly. But once your student loans, uh, once you actually are making progress on those, it would make sense to uh, make a copy of this and, and plug those numbers in to see what's possible. But mm -hmm. for August, you're not going to make extra payments. September, you're not going to make extra payments because you are going to focus on your emergency fund. October, mm -hmm. you're going to do a 400 extra November 1400 extra and then December 450 extra and then beyond that I think you probably like if we even plug in a a January let's see like kind of what yeah what the, the first you. six months or so would look like you'll have the mortgage and all of that so yeah the gifts will be will it be zero Zero, yeah, no spend January. Okay. And 
I think this will be, your sister will be done, which is amazing. Student loans will be gone, so back down to zero. MBA orientation, I think you'll have a little bit left. I'm going to put it down to 100, but uh, you might be able to take care of that in 2024. And then that leaves you with, so if we don't count this, 150 minimum to the top credit card, but you can throw another 1400 Okay. You might be good. able to do more in what's this November because I won't be putting four seventy one into my rainy day. Oh, program. that's right. Thank you. I didn't even. And you know what? This in one December. Yeah, yeah. I always do this with these. I'm like missing something. Okay, so yes, you're right. December we can actually do an extra. Oh, beautiful. Extra eight hundred. Extra eight hundred in December. Let me make sure I took that out here okay so let me change that an extra 800 in december and then an extra like 1800 which at this point i think you may want to bulk up your emergency fund a little bit if you'd be okay right. with that so mm -hmm. let's do so an extra 1100 to your debt in january and then an extra 800 to your emergency fund so 1100 and let's just say that that's what you do for going forward it's going to be that difficult to i think you could realistically do that if you that for what we were looking at for january that's putting 800 of funds elsewhere so if you can manage to just do the 1100 extra and keep in mind that with this you're still paying the minimums on everything else you're still mm -hmm. It, once you pay this debt off, it rolls into the next debt, but you still would be paying on this anyway. So let's see. So if you did an extra 1100 starting in January, you'd pay off that first credit card by April 2025. Your IRS debt would kick in. So that's something to keep in mind, but we're kind of yeah. accounting for that by um, just saying that you can only do 1100 extra. You'll pay off the other credit card by about February 2026. And then your car in October 2026. But at this point, I would assume you would have you'll probably refinance the car, get a lower interest rate. You may even deprioritize which order you pay things down. Like maybe instead you could focus on the IRS debt if that interest rate is higher, or if um, the student loans have a really high interest interest rate. Even though they'll be in forbearance, if any of them are right. accruing interest while you're still in school, you may want to prioritize those. But definitely something to revisit a few months from now um but yeah that you could be credit card debt free and car debt free by october 2026 so i know you mentioned what was your goal what was my goal yeah yeah 2027, 2027. so i think so you could do before mm -hmm. okay yeah student loan debt free I, I think it would be sooner than 2034 I think that's 10, that was giving myself 10 years so that's mm -hmm. just like paying it regular yeah. Oh. And if you can bump up your income, I like to say like increasing the gap between your your income and your expenses. So if you can keep lowering your expenses or keep them the same, no lifestyle inflation, then you can make more progress on your debt. And it gets easier as you go. You know, you're not going to have all this interest if you can tackle these. And this is so much interest that is making it much more difficult to make progress but if you get these below like eight percent and you know you just have these to worry about you'll make very quick progress so i think you could do much faster than 2034 okay yeah and then there. of course you know reevaluating every few months and seeing uh which sinking funds are a priority to you because i think you'll probably want to save for your car increase the vacation sinking fund, maybe make a gift sinking fund, um, the the car maintenance, saving for your braces, all of that is important to you as well. So, and then gaining the, adding more to the emergency fund. Yes. But, yeah. But that's kind of the next five months or so, which is pretty good. How does, how do you feel about this? Um, I didn't know that I would be able to contribute that much. So that's kind of exciting. And I'm just heavy on 
the progress. Like I like to see the progress move. Mm-hmm. So I like seeing this laid out. Um, this is helpful. Good. Yeah. And, and of course, I can finish it, finish yeah. the credit card debt sooner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That'll save a lot in interest. And this does, you know, we're being a little bit aggressive with these numbers because if you bump up your 401k, it's you're going to have a lower income. But mm-hmm. if you can, you know, just keep an eye on any areas that you may go over budget, groceries, food out, the fun and entertainment and personal, just be careful with those. And any time that you stay under budget, obviously that's helpful. And you can you can throw that to your savings for September or your debt following that right so will you be tracking everything yes i will be tracking everything i this the weekly budget is the layout for me so it helps this one yes okay yes. and i'll I, move your numbers <laughs> i've taken to putting everything in and then once i actually pay it i change the color of that cell okay. so it's a whole thing okay. so um Yes, I do need to do one item from the to-do list from last time, which is call and find out if I can get lower interest rates. Okay. I haven't done that. Okay. I'm glad you called that out. I Honestly, most people that I tell to do that, they're getting a lot of no's, um, but like, I would still try. Absolutely worth it. So I'll put that on to-do list. I recommend that to everybody. So call credit cards for lower rate. Um, I think with you, something I was going to suggest, because this is what I always say to clients, is to see if you can increase your credit limit so you can bump up your credit score and then you could refinance and get a, you know, sooner, hopefully. But with you, I don't know if that's necessarily a good idea. Okay. So we'll say. No, because I had, for Navy Federal, I only had 12,000 and then they increased me to 15,900. And you see how close I'm staying to fifteen thousand yes. nine hundred. Okay, good. yeah. So don't increase it. Oh, your limit. So why is it that you use your credit cards for spending? Um, it's a mixture of things. I think it's definitely not being able to discern your needs from your wants, and sometimes, sometimes I have needs at the end of the at the end of the money, and so where I should have spent my money on my I shouldn't have spent my money on my wants. So now I have needs and it's like, okay, well, I'm just, I have to get groceries. So I'm going to put it on my card. So, um, just a cash flow thing. I would say, I would say my, my credit card is simply a cash flow thing. If my, if my money is not in my checking and then I'm out to dinner, like I'll just swipe, I'll just swap, swipe my credit card. And that's just like, okay. 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 What, where do you hold your, what's that? That's the accessibility to extra okay. money. Yeah. Right. Where's your checking account? Which bank do you use? So my checking account was well, is with Wells Fargo. Okay. How much do you typically keep in there? Um, I don't, I keep it pretty low. I keep it like $200 and under. Okay. That's all the money out. Okay. Um, I would either use cash and track it. For, like when you'll have to pay close attention to where you spend your money with cash. I think it's kind of tough or keep a little bit more in your checking account and yeah. And just use that. I wouldn't use your credit cards at all. I don't think you should be using them. No. Cause I, I don't think they're even getting used like cash back or anything. A little bit. Right? I have $18 worth of cash back. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. So I wouldn't, if it's, if it's, because I know the last time we spoke, let me see, Delta community was at 7,800 and that's now at 75 and Navy federal was at 15,900 and now it's at 15,467. So not big of an effort of a decrease because you've just been using them. So I don't know because maybe I spent more at Christmas after we spoke. So um, when I yeah. started in January for for um Delta Community, I was mm-hmm. at eight thousand one hundred and seventy nine. So mm-hmm. for me to be down to seventy five, seventy five, seventy one is pretty good. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, okay. 
Yeah, you but got some gifts. Still, <laughs> yes. See, but it's the same kind of recurring thing. Okay. So I'm going to say on here. Okay. So pay only your minimums on your debts for September. And then I want you to not, do not use credit cards at all. So with that, geez. <laughs> so with that, I think hold on like your rainy day fund savings until the end of the month. Wait until you're like the 31st or 30th of September, if you need to, your payday. Okay. Make that at the end of the month, make sure you have enough in your checking to cash flow everything and not use your credit cards at all. Because then immediately you're going to see progress. You're going to, your, your credit card debt is going to go down. I think that's it for your to do. So to summarize, look for discounts on your car insurance, the mm -hmm. uh, little driver's course. Get your emergency fund to $1,000 in September, but wait until the end of the month to, to get it up to that. And that's going to be in cash. But yeah, just keep your checking full for now. Bump your 401k contribution to 4%. So you take advantage of the, the company match. Call your credit cards for a lower interest rate. They may not bump down to that, bump, bump anything down, unfortunately, but definitely worth it. Uh, even if it's temporary that they can just, or just a couple of points that they could lower, that'd be great. Pay only the minimums on all of your debts. So everything, make sure that these are the actual minimums and that's yeah. that's all you pay. And then don't use your credit cards at all. Yeah. Ideally at all for like the rest of the year. For the rest of ever. Yeah, for the rest of ever, <laughs> for sure. But I, I think eventually people can get to a point where they use them in a healthy way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think for you, it may not, may not be a good fit or you could at one point have something on there that's auto pay so you can keep your credit updated and stuff. But aside from that, yeah, maybe never use them. Okay. I think this looks okay. good. Anything, any concerns or questions, thoughts? No, I think it's a good plan, good plan in place. I think yeah. I can handle it. I yeah. think it's going to be good to have the accountability of the fact that I'm coming back to make sure that I uh, pay the extra to the debt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Maybe. come five, six. So like February, we want your total debt, your car and your credit cards to be 35,000. Yeah. That's a good goal. And I'm going to, let me see what all of these will be. So you're, your uh which one is this so that's delta community delta, okay so delta community delta, should be delta. about 2100 and then the navy fed should be about 143 14300 and then your car should be about and this depends too on if you end up refinancing and you change the mm -hmm. order of things, you can email me and, and see what I if you want my feedback or anything okay but if that changes then that's fine but if not, your car should be at about 18700 by the next time you're on the podcast. So we'll hold you accountable. I'm here for it. <laughs> okay, very good. So this is a good plan. Obviously, we stretch things out. This isn't 100% realistic because things are going to look different for October, yeah. November, December, and so on. But um, pretty good yeah. prediction of, of what's to come for the next few months. So... I'm excited. I don't, I don't know why I'm excited, but <laughs> just... it is exciting. <laughs> You'll make progress. Uh, I yeah. mean, getting toward your goals, that's it's all of your goals. Getting consumer debt free, becoming student loan debt free, increasing your income, it all it all goes together. So okay. Well, thank you so much for, for coming on. I appreciate you for sharing your numbers and uh even just like talking about what the past looks like and to now this is i think it's really cool to see so looking forward to the next time that we see yeah. your numbers definitely looking forward to showing off some good progress looking forward to having a bigger margin actually getting some debt paid off mm -hmm. that's that's the goal yeah okay yeah. all right well yeah. thank you so much thank you